a lot of the newer floral powders being used in racing on the World Cup and even being re released to the public these days use uh, very high melt points. Uh, Swix FC8X, FC10X. Yeah, Solda HPO5 for years has had a very high melt point, but a lot of the new stuff from Holman Cole, uh, the Vouty, the new stuff from Vouty, um, a whole bunch of brands are coming with waxes now that require iron temperatures up above 160 degrees and into the 170 to 180 degree range in order to quickly and effectively put them onto the ski. Uh, for this purpose, it's important to have a iron that can get very hot and has very good heat control. Uh, this right here is a star digital iron that I got at the Olympics from uh, the guy who builds them and it's been hot wired up to 180 degrees Celsius and I use this as my day-to-day -day iron and I don't often use the 180 degree capacity but for burning floral powders it's a really useful thing to have. To demonstrate high melt point floral application I'm using a pair of Amy's really good race skis. Uh, this is a ski that she got last year. It's got an S10X. It's had a whole season of use on this grind so it's not a freshly ground ski that's perfectly flat. It's had some uh, has some heat, has some use, and so it's going to be very representative of working on an average skier's race ski. And we're going to use uh, Star FM Super. This is a racing edition, higher melt point version of their FM floral flora powder, which is a very successful powder, but the, the Super version is a little harder, and frankly, I prefer it in most cases. So we're going to do a high melt point floral apl application, and we're going to use a high temp and it really doesn't change very much the base is well race hardened but uh, yeah we'll see how that goes the trick with pretty much any wax application is to have the right amount of material on the ski and sufficient heat so that it can flow quickly and easily what you don't want to do with a hot iron is spend a long time trying to make everything look perfect. And so having high temperatures really buys you the ability to move a little more quickly than you would with a lower temperature iron. Um, any ski that's sufficiently race hardened can handle high temps as long as you're moving well. I recommend using a good respirator to anyone who's doing any amount of floral application. I bought this supplied air respirator last year. I think uh, these are available fairly widely. This is a 3M AdFlow design, and it's got a belt for a large human, which I am not. It's also got a fan and a, a filter back here and a hose that supplies air to the mask, so it's pretty comfortable and uh, a little loud. So that's a pretty quick application there. It doesn't look perfect. What you can do in a situation like this, and this is very often the case with these high melt point floral powders, is uh, use a horsehair brush or the equivalent to brush up the powder. It's a good idea to let it cool a little bit. We'll hurry the process along here. But uh, starting at the back of the ski, you can just scuff along. And then we can reburn the powder. As you noticed, 
I burned one side of the ski followed by the other side of the ski. <laughs> Burning is a euphemistic phrase here. That's what we call putting on flora powders with an iron. Uh, but yeah, that's a trick I learned from Peter Johansson, who's a Swedish guy who's a service tech for the U.S. team. He does the skis for Andy Newell and Keegan Randall on the World Cup. And yeah, he uses one edge of the iron on one side and the other edge on the other side. And that just allows him to work with a ski that's not perfectly flat like pretty much anything that's been race waxed a handful of times. Um, here we go, I'm gonna fire this back up and we're gonna reburn this powder now that it's been powdered back up. That's pretty much going to do it for a powder application. It's really not a lot more complicated than that. With the iron that maxes out at 160 degrees, it's going to take you a long time and you're not going to get the wax to flow with some of these modern high fluoro, high melt point fluoro powders. So working with the, an iron with the appropriate heating power is really necessary for doing high level fluoro application. And I encourage you to invest in something that's going to support your work because it's going to go a lot faster and easier. The end product doesn't have to look absolutely perfect in this case. I made a pretty light application. You'll get at least six pairs out of a vial of flora powder with the amount of material I was putting on there. So I'm, I'm not pouring it all over the place and powdering the desk as well as the ski. Um, but a high melt, point, uh, high melt point wax with a hot iron at 180 degrees, the work is quite quick. And, uh, and really this, this standard here is sufficient to, uh, to provide amply good coverage and great performance. There are a lot of schools of thought on how best to brush off your flora powders from doing nothing but brushing with a dedicated horsehair brush to not much different from paraffin. I personally am of the not much different from Paris paraffin school of thought. Uh, I like to scrape very lightly just to get some of the material off and leave a little less work for the brush. And then I use the same brushes that I use with uh, paraffins and I just make sure they're quite clean. Uh, scraping lightly, it's quick and easy. It just takes the top layer of material off. The first brush I use is a, uh, is a horsehair brush and I really like this one for paraffins. Uh, because it gets into the structure very quickly and easily, but it's uh, I think probably made more for for flora powders, but uh, With this brush I brush in both directions and one quick pass from tip to tail kind of scrubbing it like this Then I like a very fine metal brush. Uh, this is a new Vouti brush that I got uh, a brass brush with extremely fine bristles is very nice. I'm particularly fond of some of the soft stainless brushes out there from uh, Skigo in particular and Home and Cole have great, great soft stainless brushes. Uh, but a quick brush with the metal. And then polish with stiff nylon. Okay.